ESPN Saturday first round coverage of the NCAA women's tournament tips off on ESPN and ESPN 2 at 11 a.m. Eastern Alabama State versus Tennessee or Old Dominion and Boston College second free throw off the mark rebounded by Jimmy McKinney six-point lead for rather four-point lead for Southern Illinois Here's Johnson, double team, wraps it inside. Young just jams it down with one hand. And again, Arthur Young, Arthur Johnson, I mean, doing a terrific job of taking the double team and finding open men. That's just experience and comfort level. And what's the key to passing out of the double team? Well, first of all, like I said, comfort. He locates first and then finds the open man. Too many guys rush it. But here, look at him relax and just look and wait. Arthur Johnson played his high school ball at Pershing High School in Detroit on the east side of the city. Ricky Paul did off the dribble this time, leans in, and he finally gets one to go. Paulding shooting in rhythm, and he will go to the line to complete the conventional three-point play. And not only is shooting in rhythm, but he's facing the hoop right here. Instead of shooting from the corner where you have to have maximum depth perception, that backboard gives you the ability to measure the depth. But if you're on the side in the corner, it's very difficult to do that. Those are the ones that he missed completely. Adds the free throw, Paulding, another one of those dynamic Detroiters, as they call them, at Mizzou. Did you, go, did you come from Detroit? Yeah, I am. Okay. I'm just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks. Now uh, Deerman, nice quick step on the baseline Ooh. and a blocking foul and Deerman hits his tailbone and he's in pain. Mm. Deerman writhing in pain underneath the basket. Deerman slashing to the basket. Again, a little body contact as he tries to go between the defenders and wow. Deerman. Split the defenders right here and look at the bodies collide and he loses his footing. Well, let's look at this and listen at regular speed. Oh. Jermaine still in some pain. Quite often though you see that it's momentary pain for these guys and they can go out and come back in after uh, this kind of in in injury. Well when you land on that bone obviously it's your nerves it goes right through your body and the initial shock is enough to keep you down there for a while. Now the question is again how much soreness starts to creep in you know how deep a bruise it is because I know that there's a bruise there. I'm not <laughs> speculating. I've done that before. So Jermaine helped to his feet. He'll be back because he is a gamer. And he's a slender guy, too, so there's not a whole lot of padding back there. <laughs> and once again, you see him split or try to split the defenders and then would colliding with Kevin Young. Not a lot of padding back there, eh? So I guess uh, Arthur Johnson would be okay. More than enough. <laughs> More than enough for the big fella. <laughs> He got enough to go around <laughs> and he's losing it every day. So the Salukis go to the free throw line. Brad Korn will shoot for Deerman. And Southern Illinois not taking advantage of free throws. They're only two of seven from the free throw line. They miss another one. Rocky with the rebound. Southern Illinois, two of eight from the line. Missouri by one. And a traveling violation called on Jimmy McKinney. And we talked about the similarities with game one, where the lower seed had some difficulty with their high score. They also had difficulty, Holy Cross did, with shooting from the free throw line. And it ultimately cost them. This is Missouri's 12th turnover. So they're not, they're not helping their own cause right now. They're losing opportunities that Southern Illinois has given them by missing free throws. And Missouri turns the ball over only 14 times per game, and to have 12 turnovers in the first half is definitely a sign. 
that they are not at the top of their games today. Pull up jump shot by Brooks. Short, now Paulding. In traffic, and he's fouled. And boy, Missouri was lucky that time because Paulding really didn't have anything going to the basket there. He got bailed out. But Jimmy McKinney, Quinn Snyder wants him to run the offense. McKinney's just a freshman. He wasn't assertive enough to come and get the ball. He stood kind of in the background and allowed Paulding to go a little bit out of control. Again, for Missouri, fortunate that he was fouled and bailed him out of that tough situation. So Paulding at the line, an 80% free throw shooter, and here comes big game, Jermaine Dearman. Self-proclaimed. That's by gone. The way. <laughs> no, no, they started calling him that, didn't they? No, he started calling himself big game Jermaine. Okay. And it's stuck. But you know what? After what he did last year in the Sweet 16, you, you can know, call him whatever he wants. Right. 20 call points, him. nine rebounds. Took his team to two wins. 33-30. Missouri on a 7-0 run. With a minute to go in the first half. Williams around the screen. Fires. Rebounded. Blocked. And out of bounds, Cronky. Is that Cronky? No, it isn't. It's Ryan Kiernan. And for the last minute, he couldn't save it from going out of bounds. New shot clock for Southern Illinois. Brooks. And a foul. Williams foul behind the three-point line by Cronky. Cronky hit him, I think, at the top of the lip as Williams grabbed his mouth a little bit. But, you know, again, the biggest mistake you can make is foul a three-point shooter. You talk about Williams. Williams is a 77% free throw shooter. He's going to get three and a 48% three-point shooter. But what do you do if you want to contest the shot? You put your hands up, force them to shoot over you, but so many guys reach out almost in a 45-degree angle and ultimately make contact. Put your hands straight up in the air. That presents more of an obstacle. Southern Illinois continuing to struggle at the free throw line. Two, make it three of ten now. And here comes Jimmy McKinney back into the game, replacing Ryan Kiernan. 13 Missouri turnovers in the first half. Second one for, third one rather for Williams is good. And that, that foul obviously paid off for Williams. We'll be back right after this. And Jones unable to connect and the foul goes against Jones of Vermont for the charge. Yeah, Vermont started out this game with pretty sharp three out of their first six from the field. But since then, two for 11. And Nothing looking smooth offensively right now. The break they're catching is that Arizona doesn't look very sharp at their offensive end. Scotty Jones with his second foul for Vermont. Hassan Adams back for Arizona. And uh, both uh, Sheftik and uh, Coppenrath inserted into the lineup by Tom Brennan for Vermont. He figures with seven minutes to go in half, you just can't risk Arizona building up a huge lead. This early in the game into his own the catamounts perhaps trying to protect those two big men. Quinn working the official thing he's walking straight down the line asking questions while the play is going on. You know he's learned his lessons well as an assistant under Mike Krzyzewski. Certainly has. Shot clock turned off 10 seconds remaining in the first half. Here's McKinney. Missouri wants to get into it. Paulding off the dribble down the lane. The kick, McKinney for three. Short, and that'll do it. A sloppy first half by both teams. Missouri turned it over. Southern Illinois couldn't hit free throws. 12 lead changes, and Mizzou heads into the locker room with a one-point lead, 33-32. Now let's go to Solomon Wilcox with Coach. All right, CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA basketball tournament will continue in a moment.
tactical. They're just being patient and finding the open man on the weak side of the court. But you've got to spot Salim Stoudemire. He now has 11, three of those on trays. He's just uh, so accurate from outside the arc. Oh, he's going to hang out there, and if Arizona quickly swings the ball, strong side to weak side, he'll get a lot of open looks. He just can't catch up with a good passing. Hassan Adams, the freshman with the reach in, has his first foul. Team fouls. Uh, only the third on Arizona, seven for Vermont. Gonzaga has defeated Cincinnati in the first game today, and we'll meet the winner of this one as Matt Sheftick misses the jumper. The littlest uh, man on the court, Gardner at six feet, gets the rebound. And uh, Egan Iguodala, the freshman, unable to grab the handle on that dribble and uh, turns it over. Well, the play before that, Lute Olsen had a little chat with the other well, freshman, Hassan Adams, had some words of wisdom for him, very upset with this last turnover by Iguodala. He's going to have some words with him. I know Lute Olsen loves his freshmen because of their ability, but it's uh, forcing him to do a lot more coaching than I think he'd like to do at this stage <laughs> in his life. You can't say that these kids are giving him gray hair. <laughs> the damage has been done. But we're all envious of that, uh, those frocks anyway. Off the ball, a fake. Shot unsuccessful from Grant Anderson. And leading by eight, here comes Arizona. Stoudemire off to Fry. Short. And the rebound to David Hain. Takes it all away. At halftime, it's the Missouri Tigers by one over Southern Illinois. Three other games taking place. We'll take you around the country to all the action. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome once again to Singular at the Half. Our score at halftime in Indianapolis, Missouri, with a 33 to 32 lead on Southern Illinois. Well, I'm joined by Clark Kellogg. And the interesting thing about this game is these are two teams that finished the season very, very strong. Exactly. And Missouri had a terrific run last year in the tournament, getting to the Elite Eight. They're on top by one despite a number of turnovers. Southern Illinois has missed seven of their 11 free throw attempts. So both teams have areas of weakness. The, in that Salukis, first half. the Salukis are a team that come into this game, Clark, having won. 14 of their last 16 games. It's tight by one point at halftime. The Missouri Tigers lead in Salt Lake City. Vermont meeting the Arizona Wildcats, the top seed in the West, 28-18. Let's take you live to Salt Lake City. Dick Emberg, Matt Gukas, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In the West, Salt Lake City, it's Huntsman Center on the campus of the University of Utah, where the number one seed, Arizona Wildcats, have opened up a 10 point lead with three and a half minutes to go in this opening half. Taylor Coppenrath, the leading scorer for Vermont, has 10, but also with two fouls. And Matt Sheftick has just picked up his third foul, and that's critical to the University of Vermont. He's their bulk inside at 6 8. Salim Stoudemire, the leading scorer in this first half, has his 12th point on the free throw as Sheftick, given a rest, as 43 Scotty Jones comes in. Salim Stoudemire was the Pac-10 Freshman of the Year last year, shot 90% from the free throw line, shooting 88% this year, second best all time of Arizona players. Yeah, he made, uh, had a long string last year successfully. Dennis White and Hollis Price. Corey Seals again. Here comes Price off to Johnston. Look out on his side, and the trail by Johnston. An unexpected source of offense for the Oklahoma Sooners. The controlled break, it looked like he'd leave it behind for Kevin Bookout. Little Maravich in that kid. <laughs> it's a sophomore from Midland, Texas. Moses Malone Jr. with a runner. South Carolina State, four of 21. Folks, that's 19%. Oklahoma is 37% from the field. Oh, what a move. What a move indeed. Johnny Gilbert. Oh, 
Wayne Johnston took it here, part of a 28-7 Sooner run. Well, the Catamounts of Vermont faced the longest odds in the NCAA tournament, and number 16 has never defeated a number one seed, and they trail one of the teams uh, favored to get to the Final Four, Lou Olson's Arizona team, by 12 points here with 337 left in this first half, and what a trip it's been for Vermont. The excitement of winning their conference tournament championship in the American East by one point over Boston U. First time in their 103-year basketball history to get into the tournament. Inside is Anderson, and another short shot does not fall for Vermont. And then they draw this very difficult team, University of Arizona. Wide open is Anderson, and he hits the bank. A nice job by Rick Anderson inside to adjust. So Vermont's first ever trip to the NCAA beginning to turn sour with three minutes to play in the first half. Arizona very much in control. Spokane, Washington, South Region first round action. BYU and UConn. We join Tim Brando and Bob Wenzel. Connecticut has taken control here in the second half of this matchup. Well, Okafor has dominated the offensive end for the Huskies, and that is not a normal thing for them. Usually the perimeter guys scoring also, but he is carrying the load offensively in this game thus far. As he ever. Horton has hit a couple of shots to open the second half. BYU struggling to get off perimeter shots. Every shot under pressure oh. by Bigelow. He was the leading scorer and rebounder for this team as a freshman, then went on a Mormon mission to Fort Lauderdale. And then came back and has made his presence felt in a big way. Okafor, pulled down by Hadahuzio. Remember, Schof is out of the game with four fouls, so Jerry Jensen back in. Bigelow did not get the shoulder square for that perimeter jump. They've got numbers, four on two right here. Talit Brown, just inside the arc. And the kick out again. Robertson, the better part of discretion right there, could have let it go. Robertson, very quick one-on-one -on -one player. Brown forces the issue. Good defensive work that time by BYU. Bigelow. Hanson's on this wing. He hasn't had many touches recently. Jared Jensen. Hayes plays behind him. That's how he forces him all the way off the block. Jensen not as effective that far away. Mahugio steps out for three. BYU now one of 13 from three-point range. And it is a weapon that they normally use very, very effectively, and you must credit UConn's perimeter defense with that statistic. Hanson really works hard on defense as well, Timmy, and as a result, I think he gets tired out some. Denham Brown, who has uh, been instant offense, did draw the starting nod for today's game. He has seven points, all of them in the second half. He and Rashad Anderson. So as uh, Tim Brando and Bob Wenzel said, after this game was tied at 26 apiece at halftime, the UConn Huskies have slowly but surely taken control. Well, I love this UConn team because he has, Jim Calhoun has multiple weapons in addition to a guy who can anchor things defensively in a Mecca Okafor, and he's also been a presence at the offensive end, which is, added, is an added bonus for them. All right, Clark, one other game in progress right now in the East region in Oklahoma City, South Carolina State meeting the top seed in the East, the uh, Oklahoma Sooners, and right now the Sooners are leading it with uh, coming up on 220 to play in the first half 31 to 15 the Sooners lead the Bulldogs earlier today in Oklahoma City California and NC State went to overtime Kevin Harlan in the final seconds Bears they win it in overtime and eliminate the Wolfpack the score 76 to 74 we thank you for joining us here on singular at the half we'll send you back to Indianapolis for the second half of Southern Illinois Missouri right after this CBS Sports presents Singular at the half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. John Elliott, wouldn't it be? Yeah, that's, that's pretty darn good. Udala gets one out of two. It's 39-20 Arizona with 30 seconds to go. You saw Taylor Coppenrath came back in. Coppenrath up at the top of the key. They double team Hain. Coppenrath open inside. Nicely done by Vermont. 16 seconds to go on the half. 14 points for Coppenrath. He's been a one-man sh show for Vermont. 
Coppin ran at the six for 11. The rest of the team three for 21. Hain as the buzzer sounds and he was on line just a little short. The end of the half. Stoudemire with 16 to lead Arizona. Coppenrath with 14 for Tom Brennan's Catamounts. 39-22 Arizona's lead. Not unexpected. A very impressive 20 minutes from Lute Olson's Wildcats as we go. Where are they? <laughs> That's the end of the first half, 39-22, Arizona's lead. Greg Gumbel will be back with Singular at the half right after this message. Center there, a foul called on Seals. Malone didn't get that shot to drop, but much better shot taken in rhythm. The defense collapsed as the ball was taken down toward the baseline and kicked back out. But South Carolina State, after a pretty good start, unable to sustain it. Take another look at this alley-oop. A terrific screen, and that's where the screener's man has got to communicate. The man guarding Blake Johnston has got to call out that screen and switch and bump that cutter so that Oklahoma cannot get that timing down to throw that lob. Oklahoma winning their third consecutive Big 12 tournament title. Leading Missouri, Jabari Brown will check out. With Johnny Gilbert in there with the raw. Zendre at the line, White, Blake Johnston, the Sooner Five. Malone out there, Zimmerman, Seals, Braddock, along with Larry Judge, who's got the ball now for South Carolina State. Zimmerman trying to take it inside. Zendre was there. And it's off of South Carolina State. Looked like it hit Zendre and then hit Zimmerman before it went out of bounds. Zimmerman trying to do just a little bit too much. Final minute of the first half. Rebounding in this game, plus five for the Oklahoma Sooners. Good pass. Into Gilbert, up here to your right. Blake Johnston has really done a nice job in this ball game, subbing in for Hollis Price. 20 point lead is the biggest lead today for Oklahoma, who trailed by four for the first eight, nine minutes of the game. Zimmerman to Dustin Brannon. Double team, great with Sooner defenders. Can't even breathe. Well, tonight, after a short break at many of the venues, most of you will see Arizona State against Memphis. That'll be here in Oakland. We're at halftime of Vermont and Arizona. We'll bring you the action from elsewhere around the country. Coming right up. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Singular's wireless polling allows you to get into the game. Hi, everyone. Greg Gumbel in New York. Welcome to Singular at the half. Our score at the half, Arizona leading Vermont by a score of 39-22. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and... Uh, Vermont's looking like a 16 seed. <laughs> exactly. You said it. Arizona just needed to take some time, get into their groove, and this one will be, um, it's out of hand, and I think it'll continue to be that way. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, in Indianapolis, Southern Illinois is taking on the Missouri Tigers. It's a one-point game. Missouri in the lead. Second half just underway. Let's take you there live. Gus Johnson and Len Elmore. Arthur Johnson has had a huge game for the Missouri Tigers. Johnson with 10 points and seven rebounds. Here's Bryant inside, the drop step, got it up and in. The two big guys have made the difference. Well, they certainly have. That's 20 points between Arthur Johnson and Trayvon Bryant. And that's where the advantage for Missouri lies. Get the ball inside to their big guys. The winner here plays Marquette, who defeated Holy Cross in our first game of the day. Travis Diener. Diminutive point guard at 29 points. And now, Kent Williams will go to the line again for the second time in this game, and I believe shoot three free throws. Zimmerman trying to get it off before the buzzer and cannot. And that takes us to halftime. Well, D'Angelo Alexander, 10 points, three rebounds. South Carolina State was able to muster only four points. In the last nine and a half minutes, let's send it over to... Yeah, sometimes that defense gets his offense going. Top seed Oklahoma here in Oklahoma City taking care of 16th seed South Carolina State, 35-16.